Howdy guys, Mira Skydot here, Rusalor Solish for Carta Beskar Clan in Central Texas. I'd like to share with you my methods for painting up and getting ready to troop as an alien Mandalorian. Now your first step in becoming an alien Mando is obviously going to be choosing which alien you want to be. Be it Twi'lek, Togruta, Chiss, or even a Wookiee, that particular alien will need to be taken into account when building your kit. We're going to fast forward a bit to the point when you've already got your kit built, and this is how at least I get ready. I like to preface this by saying I am by no means an expert. This is just what I do and what works for me. Your mileage may vary, but here we go. So first I like to start out with a toner. I'm going to basically apply the toner to any skin that will be painted. Uh, the one I use, it's by a company that does body paint, not the same body paint as I use. Uh, when it comes to paint, you have several options. You can use a water base, an alcohol base, or a hybrid between the two. What works best for you is going to depend on your skin chemistry, what you enjoy applying, what stays well. Uh, you're, I recommend testing out, not the day of the con or the troop, uh, testing out what's, what works best for you and then just going from there. So I'm going to let this set a little bit. And you see I've already pulled back my hair since I have a lot of long hair and uh, putting on leku gets difficult if you don't tie it up and so I'm going ahead and putting it up in caps now that way I don't have to worry about getting pa paint in my hair and it just keeps things tidy while I'm painting so order of operations here you can see I've got just my plain black undersuit on uh, the logo will be hidden when my vest goes on you'll need to figure out what works best with your kit with how you designed it I've designed mine so that the neck area on my flak vest is actually large enough to slip on without rubbing on my face. So I'm just going to paint in this because that flak vest, that duck cloth gets a little warm after a while and you don't want to start the process of overheating before you even get your armor on. But in order to protect the undersuit, I am actually going to use an apron primarily used for hair. Uh, hair dyeing and that sort of thing. So we're just going to put this on to protect the undersuit. Uh, you don't have to get a fancy apron like this. You can just use one of your towels. You can use paper towels. Just anything you can put down to protect your kit or however much of your kit you have on from paint drippage because at least especially if you're using a liquid based paint it can get drippy as you can see. All right, so I've got to shake up the paint now that the toner is set. We are going to start applying my paint. I like to pour just about a half, uh, pour it about halfway full, just because when I circle my hands, I tend to splash. And so by putting less product into the airbrush, it can help prevent splashing and dripping and making a bigger mess than we need it to. Give me just one moment, I gotta turn on the airbrush. There we go. And here we go. Now when applying, I like to make small circles. That way you don't end up with stripes, which we really want to avoid. The goal is to just get even coverage uh, to make it look like a natural, albeit in this case green, skin tone. Typically, you're going to want to cover, obviously, all of your visible skin, and then just a little beyond whatever uh, clothing items you'll have on. So in this case, if trooping, I would go just a bit beyond the color line of my undersuit, just to make sure that even if fabric slips, it's not going to show your natural skin tone and ruin the illusion of being a rainbow-colored alien. And give me just one moment. I am going to pull out the mirror. 
And now we can see why the drop cloth is important is because apparently I flail while I talk. And so, And now I'm not painting my ears just because uh, Twi'lek females typically have the iconic ear cones, but because of how I've designed this kit, I don't always wear my ear cones because I have a full wrap, but my ears will be hidden so I don't need to bother painting them. However, if you're another alien race like a chess where your ears will be showing, I'd recommend pinching them shut, especially if you're using airbrush paint while painting so you don't end up with paint in your ears. Same goes for your nose. And you see I'm painting my mouth too? Yes, it's safe to use on your lips. Sorry. And yes, I'm getting a little bit of paint in my hair. It's, it'll come out, it's not the end of the world for me. Another trick while painting around your eye area, it's gonna be, you're gonna wanna squint. Don't squint or you will actually end up with uh, paint lines where your skin naturally wrinkles. So by raising your eyebrows and stretching the skin over your eye, you're able to get a much smoother paint. And sometimes while you're painting, your airbrush will decide it wants to clog when you're two-thirds of the way done painting your face. Uh, this is going to be basic troubleshooting. Uh, you'll have to get used to whatever method you use. Uh, if it's water-based paint, a sponge, a brush, uh, alcohol and hybrids are typically airbrush, but not always. Again, practice with what you've got and you'll be able to learn how to do it better. a little bit more paint. Keep towels handy.
You also may notice that there is some discoloration in this bald cap. I typically use the same cap for when I'm painting, just because I know that I can get it torn up and it won't mess with any of my wigs. All right, so now that we, let me even this out a little bit. So now for the time being, we're going to turn that off and now we're going to get on to contouring. Now I know contouring can be a scary word, especially if you're not used to doing it in your day to day makeup, uh, but it's kind of a big thing for when you're body painting because as you can see by painting my skin all one color, I have removed all the natural highs and lows that you get on your skin tone. So we have to add those back in. Personally, I use eyeshadow. I'll typically, depending on what color I am painting on a particular day, I have collected palettes in various colors. This one happens to be an all green palette. And so I'm just going to take a brush and we are going to start adding those natural shadows back in to our skin tone. Now, this is another case where depending on what type of paint you're using, it may not hold up to having makeup applied over it. So that's just gonna be another thing that you have to test and see what works best for you, what works best with your color, what works best with your paint. So there's cheekbones, gonna do a little bit at my temples. And then just a bit to add some shape back to my nose. You can also use your contouring to change the shape of your nose or lips or chin. But uh, again, going to depend on your facial structure and that sort of thing as to what you might want to do. just a little bit of highlight down uh, the bridge of my nose in a lighter shade. Same with tops of the cheekbones, just above the lip and on the chin. And another thing we're going to add is a jawline because again, the paint has completely wiped mine out. And what I like to do is I will take the contour on my jawline and blend it down into my neck. That way it makes it look like a shadow as opposed to a line across the bottom of my neck. There we go, just to give it a little more shape. All right, so now that we have a little bit of a contour done, oh, this side is what I need to fix. I'm going to move on to my eye makeup. Now, in my opinion, Twi'leks are typically kind of extra. I mean, if you're going through all of this trouble of painting yourself like this for a troop, you're obviously not going to be, you may not be wearing your helmet your whole time, the whole time. Uh, so I like to do a full face makeup look to fit the paint. Again, I stick with the same color palette just to keep things simple. 
but you're free to mix it up. Uh, being able to be a character that is a different color of the rainbow means you get to play with a lot of the makeup in your drawer that might not get used as often. Uh, like, I have some very vivid palettes, including this one, that I can't wear on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's it's a neat time to be able to explore what you may have impulse bought at Ulta one day. And the other benefit of the eyeshadow, even if you are not going for a full glam look, which we're going to be kind of going up today, um, it's also going back through and adding those shadows in your crease uh, to give your eyes some depth. adding a slightly darker color in the back corners and blending it out. Now I know that there's some discussion in regards to whether or not Twi'leks have eyebrows. For me, it depends on the day. If you want to go through the trouble of gluing down your brows, that's fine. Typically just a standard glue stick will do the trick. Sorry, getting rid of some fallout there. Uh, glue stick and then use a spoolie, one of these guys, to brush it up and then glue it flat and brush it up and glue it flat until you can put on some of your standard foundation, powder, set, uh, or you can keep your normal brows and just fill them with a uh, complementing color to give it a more natural look. Now, while I am in here, apologies, I just knocked off the palette I needed. Sorry guys, apparently I have misplaced the one I was looking for, but we're gonna make it work. Basically, I'm taking a darker color and lining my waterline, which is the area between your actual eye and your lashes. This is not necessary, and if you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. I just prefer to do it because that little bit of pink, for me, ruins that illusion of being green. Normally, I would use a dark brown or black, but the... Uh, this little guy right here is going to work just fine. And you have to be careful on this or you're going to end up with makeup in your eye that can be irritating and yeah. <laughs> All right, now back to that eye look. I'm going in with something a little shimmery because again I feel like Twi'leks just have that little bit of extra so using a nice shimmer can add that little bit of pop. Again, just brushing off that bit of fallout. I just use a big fluffy brush uh, to get rid of any of the excess powder that may drop. And now I'm doing a lighter color in the corner of my eyes. Uh, I'm using a this goldish greenish shimmer.
Now, as you can see, it looks like I have no lashes because when I airbrushed, it airbrushed on top of the lashes as well. So we need to add back that color with a little bit of mascara. Now, personally, I'm actually going to be using lashes, like fake lashes with this total look. So I don't want to load up on just too terribly much mascara. But once the lashes are on, you can also go back and blend it, blend your natural lashes in with the fake ones using your mascara. And honestly, I recommend at least a brown, uh, even for male Twi'lex, just to make it so that the fiber isn't the same color as your skin. Because it looks a little weird having none whatsoever. So you're going to want to add back in just a little bit. And I apologize, I misspoke, male presenting. Um, so now we are going to move on to liner. Now I am actually using, I will be using magnetic lashes because I am horrible with glue. And I've found that applying glue over paint gets tricky. So this can go on over my paint and then the lashes will just pop right on. And since this is a liquid liner, uh, if you use a similar product, you're going to want to make sure not to open your eye all the way. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a line across your brow bone. And that's not fun to clean up with paint involved. just going to smoke out that liner a bit by adding a darker green underneath. And I know it looks like it's a bit much, but it's going to work, I promise. So the next thing we're going to do while that sets is lips and then I like to do uh, character tattoos. Like I have several sets of Leku in different colors, but the same. But I always have the same war paint or facial tattoos or other markings. It uh, several members of my clan when we first started, we we kind of made it a thing for us at least. So I've I stuck with it, and it kind of helps make your make your character your own and make it more unique. So we have our basic look, and now I'm actually going to go through with the same liquid lipstick to apply the tattoos. I like to do just a straight line down my chin. And then a series of dots across my cheekbones. Uh, your, your war paint or tattoos can be as simple or as complex as you like. Sometimes it can be just a line across your face. You can shade your whole forehead darker if you have a character that your forehead's not going to be covered. Um, or I even have a clan mate who goes through and writes our 
clan name in Mandoa down the side of his face in a very small, like about that much. So just pick how you want your character to look and go with it. You, you are creating your own character within this Star Wars universe that we all love. Have fun with it. And personally, I like using, that was a little bigger than usual, usual. I like using the liquid lipstick just because it does have a smaller applicator so I can uh, have more precision while applying the markings. And if you mess up, it happens. Roll with it. Okay, so we're gonna act like I want to, we're gonna act like we're doing brows today. So again, I'm just gonna go through with a color that coordinates with my paint scheme here. And I am just going to fill, just using eyeshadow, my natural brow. Because at least in universe, a lot of female Twi'leks would uh, either draw on or tattoo on brows because of the trade they were involved in and it made it a little more humanoid to have some form of brow just to kind of not be quite as blank on your forehead because a lot of the clientele would be used to brows so it's all up to how you want your character to look. There we go. All right, so now let's go on. And this is why I use the magnetic lashes because all I have to do is put them in, well, with a mirror. Just get them generally in the right place and they just stick. And at least for me, I feel like it really helps complete a makeup look to add these just for that little bit of extra flair for your character, if that's the route you want to go. So now that we've got most of the makeup done, I'm going to go ahead and paint my hands. Typically, you're going to want to put as much of your kit on as possible before doing hands, just so you don't end up with smudges. But let's face it, my kit needs a little bit of touch up anyway, so if I get some paint on it, it won't kill me. Now, if your Mando does not have fingerless gloves, you can skip this step. I only paint like the top half of my finger because I do wear a fingerless glove. Personally, I just prefer them for, uh, what's the word? Practicality's sake. It's just easier to function for me if I can use my hands. And one trick when painting your hands, you want to make sure to bend your knuckles as you paint. 
Otherwise, you're going to end up with skin tone stripes down your knuckles for where the paint couldn't hit because you had your hands straight. You can also, I'm not going to today, but you can also go so far as uh, painting your nails a coordinating color so you don't see the skin tone under that. It just, again, depends on how you want your character to look. And yes, I understand my palm is green. This is where I test the brush to make sure I'm getting the right t uh, level of paint output before I got started. And you can probably see the amount of just fine mist of an overspray. This is why you want to cover everything in your workspace, especially in a hotel bathroom. I know uh, Twi'lek Pam actually has suggestions on putting a towel on the back end of a box fan so that it's sucking the overspray through, catching it in the towel, and then spraying the clean air back into the room. handy to keep paper towels, makeup remover wipes, q-tips, any other sort of potential cleanup tool nearby while you're painting. Some people, even if you do have your hands showing, uh, you can purchase or make arm socks in the color uh, that you're painting the rest of your body. That way you don't have to bother with this and it'll be just like putting on gloves. Just another very thin pair underneath your gloves for your kit. again. Another recommendation, I understand it's easier if you keep the paint open while you're painting in case of refills, close it in between. I cannot tell you the level of despair you will feel when you tump the last bit of your paint down the sink. So keep it closed, open it if you need it. Especially like if you're using a liquid paint like this. So now that we are painted up, it's time to kit up. Now, as I said earlier, your starting point may be a little bit different than mine, depending on how your kit is designed. I have a very large neck hole on my vest so that I can put it on without messing this up. I'm also learning that this is easier to do when standing in a nice open changing room as opposed to sitting in a computer chair. So you see my vest actually goes a lot lower than most, but fortunately because I'm using a legacy style armor, it is all solid and covered. So we're going to put the armor on next. Again, designed with enough of a gap to be CRL compliant while still being able to just slip my head through. Buckles can be tricky, but uh, fortunately, most of the time when you're getting dressed for a troop, you will not have to do it all by yourself. There will surely be a handler or a wrangler or, or somebody who will be able to help you with this process. 
There we go. Now, for the fun part. Now, these are the Leku I will be wearing today, obviously. Um, mine are made of silicone. For longer troops, I will actually put a silicone, not a latex, a silicone swim cap over my wig caps, but underneath the Leku just to help it stick better for those long troops or outdoor troops or anywhere you may sweat, just because they do get a little bit slick. Uh, wig grips are also your friend, but to put mine on, I start low on my forehead and pull back and then kind of feel for where they need to be and adjust from there. Now I know I wear mine a little bit differently than other people. Uh, this is actually what we're coming to next is the most iconic part of our kits, our helmet. So as you can see, my helmet looks a little bit differently. It is designed with the Leku in mind, and it is actually made to come apart so that I am able to put it on over uh, the headpiece. Now, you may say, hey, Meg, Mira, we can still see other stuff. The next step is actually my head wrap, which I use, uh, I like using cotton wraps as opposed to necessarily a traditional neck seal. Just for personal reasons, it's difficult for me to have things tight around this area. So I use a nice flowy wrap. It fits with the kit but you will want to work with your Rissalor to make sure whatever you're planning is going to be approvable. Tie that back and then just kind of drape this over and then it will wrap around and tuck. And then you can just make adjustments from there. So you can see how it's hiding most of the visible skin. I guess I didn't quite paint enough on that side. But again, uh, for longer troops, I will actually pin the wrap into place so that I don't have to worry about skin showing. So now on to the bucket. Like I said, I designed mine with my Leku in mind. It's honestly was possibly the most difficult part of this build was constructing a helmet. I know there are some cast resin Twi'lek helmets out there, but because I wear my Leku a little bit differently than other people, those helmets would not have worked for me because they slope more down and I wear uh, my tails more up. So in my opinion, a uh, one size fits all Twi'lek bucket is kind of like a one size fits all shoe. It will likely take a little bit of modification to fit you. But with that in mind, I designed mine. I actually took a wig head like this one, uh, taped the face that I had built to it, and then built up the dome with fiberglass and Bondo to make sure that it fit the contours of my Leku. So now, we're actually not going to put that on yet, because we still have gauntlets and gloves. And at this point, uh, your dressing routine, it's all personal preference. If you want to do your gauntlets first, then gloves. If you want to do your waist items, boots, and knees, um, whatever is easiest for you to put on your kit, go with it. I am not one to tell you how to build your armor. I generally do gauntlets first and then my gloves, just because the gloves are slightly limiting for my range of motion. And it's just easier to put on the gauntlets before the gloves. And now we see why I went to the trouble of painting my hands because just that much of my 
uh, fingers are visible. But the skin is all covered thanks to the glove. And I actually tend to uh, tuck my undersuit into the glove to prevent slipping and to prevent the flight suit from sticking up from the end of my gauntlets. So there we have that. And now, now we can do the helmet. Like I said, I've designed this with my Leku in mind. So I'm going to scoot back a little and try not to knock over my screen. But as you can see, it comes apart. So I can take the back and just slip it underneath the Leku. So it sits resting right on my shoulders. And then I did the magnets on the outside so that I would be able to feel while wearing them and make sure that my bucket was on all the way. So there you have it. That is my basic how I get ready as an alien Mando. Um, personally, I when I'm trooping, I do a lot of booth duty. I do a lot of recruiting. So I do try to do a full face just so it's easier to interact with people without a helmet in the way. It can be difficult to understand, difficult to, for you to see, difficult for you to hear, especially with additional layers over your ears, as my, in, like in my case. Um, but yeah, you can modify, you are welcome to uh, use anything you've seen in this video for your own character if you like it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on the forums. My forum name is here, Mira Skydat. Um, but yeah, so this is how I get ready. Thank you guys for watching and enjoy MercsCon online.